Hello, I'm the 10-Minute English Teacher. Let's get you exam ready. Today I'm going to be thinking about love and relationships poetry for AQA English Literature GCSE and I'm going to be providing you with a guide to Winter Swans by Owen Shears. Before we get going, don't forget to like and subscribe. There are plenty of things on the channel to help you revise for love and relationships poetry. Okay, my guide to Winter Swans. We're going to start by thinking about what the poem's about. So, a couple who've been disagreeing go for a winter walk and view some swans. The image of the swans on the water influences the couple and they hold hands, averting their relationship coming to an end. Happy ending to the poem. So, here's a quick reading of the poem before we think about analysing it and the quotes that we need to know for the exam. Winter Swans by Owen Shears. The clouds have given their all. Two days of rain and then a break in which we walked... The waterlogged earth gulping for breath at our feet as we skirted the lake, silent and apart, until the swans came and stopped us with a show of tipping in unison, as if rolling weights down their bodies to their heads. They halved themselves in the dark water, icebergs of white feather, paused before returning again like boats riding in rough rough weather. They mate for life, you said, as they left, porcelain on the stilling water. I didn't reply, but as we moved on through the afternoon light, slow stepping in the lake's shingle and sand, I noticed our hands that had somehow swum the distance between us and folded one over the other like a pair of wings settling after flight. Winter Swans there by Owen Shears. And that takes us to thinking about how we structure our response in the exam. So our first paragraph tells us about the two poems and how they relate to the theme in the question. You just need to tell us what they're about and be concise. So only two or three um, sentences for each poem. So here's an example of that. So if I was having to compare winter swans to something else, this is what I might write in that first paragraph about winter swans. In winter swans, a couple who've been disagreeing go for a winter walk and view some swans. The image of the swans on the water influences the couple and they hold hands, averting their relationship coming to an end. The the poem explores how relationships can be difficult and challenging as well as fragile. So that would be my first paragraph talking about the two poems that I'm going to be writing about. My second paragraph tells the reader about the structure in each of those poems. So can you make a comment on the rhyme scheme or metre of each of them? So here's an example of me analysing the structure of Winter Swans. The poem has an irregular metre and Shears doesn't adopt a rhyme scheme. This could be used to create a tone of uncertainty and creates tension, possibly to reflect the uncertainty of the situation. The couple are on the verge of ending their relationship in the poem and it explores how love can be challenging and distressing. So that would be what I would write about the poem in the second response to analyse the structure. That done, I'm then moving on to analysing language. Okay, in front of you is the only flashcard you're going to need. We've got Um, A little bit of writing here about themes and structure. Feel free to snip this and keep. And you've got four key quotes that are worth knowing. You might analyse every single line in your anthology, but you don't need to do that. In the the time you've got, 45 minutes, once you've written that first paragraph and then you've analysed the structure in your second, you're only really going to be analysing three or four quotes from each of the two poems that you've chosen. So here are my four quotes to know from Winter Swans. The clouds have given their all. The clouds could be a metaphor for the arguments the couple have been having, which could now have finished. This could foreshadow their coming together or the relationship ending. So there's a bit of uncertainty at the beginning. We've got these swans and they're described to be porcelain over the stilling water. And this metaphor communicates the idea that relationships are beautiful and precious. That's what porcelain is. Porcelain rather, but also fragile. The swans are also um, described to be icebergs of white feather. Icebergs are strong and immovable, but there's always something underneath the surface. And there's been all this tension between the couple that's led up to this situation where they're nearly ending their relationship. And at the end, we've got that image of their hands um, settling like the swans after flight. Their hands have swum the distance between us. The couple hold hands at the end, and this metaphor links them to the swans, which pair for life. So we've got a relatively positive end to the poem and the tension is dispelled. Okay, if you want to take it further, write in full sentences to age your revision. You need to know the answer to these five key questions. Who's the speaker? What's their frame of mind in the poem? What's the key use of language in the poem and what does it communicate? And to be fair, you should know four key quotes by memory for this poem. What structure does the poem have and what effect does this have? What ideas about love does the poem communicate and what is the context of the poem? Okay, check out the other videos on my channel. I'll continue to add content. Feel free to to ask for something you'd like to see me cover in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and keep revising.